Want to speak real Indonesian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at IndonesianPod101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. Today, we'll learn conversational phrases about occupations. After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your job and ask what somebody does for a living. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your occupation PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya seniman. Listen to it again, now with the English translation. Apa pekerjaan Anda? What do you do? Saya seniman. I'm an artist. First of all, you need to learn how to say, What do you do? That's... Apa pekerjaan Anda? Listen to it again. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Apa pekerjaan Anda? This Indonesian sentence literally translates into what is your job, but it means what do you do in English. Now, how do you answer this question? This is the pattern you'll need. Saya. Your occupation. I'm a. An. Your occupation. For example, I'm an artist. Saya. Seniman. Saya. Seniman. Here are a few more professions you can use with the same pattern. Police officer. Policy. Policy. Teacher. Guru. Guru. Doctor. 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 Engineer. Insignor. Insignor. Now, listen to some examples. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya guru. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya dokter. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya insinyur. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what do you do? Apa pekerjaan Anda? Imagine you're a doctor. Do you remember how to say, doctor? Doctor. Doctor. Say, I'm a doctor. Saya dokter. Now answer the question saying that you are a doctor. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya dokter. Now, imagine you're a teacher. Do you remember how to say teacher? Guru. Guru. Say, I'm a teacher. Saya guru. Now, answer the question saying that you are a teacher. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya guru. Now, imagine you're an engineer. 
Do you remember how to say engineer? Insignor. Insignor. Say, I'm an engineer. Saya, insignor. Now, answer the question saying that you are an engineer. Apa pekerjaan Anda? Saya, insignor. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real-life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. 
There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. And for even more ways to gain conversation skills, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, how's your mother? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about well-being and ask how someone is doing. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Conversation About Family Wellbeing PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia baik. Once more with the English translation. Bagaimana ibumu? How's your mother? Dia baik. She's fine. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, How's your mother? That's... Bagaimana ibumu? Listen to it again. Bagaimana ibumu? Bagaimana ibumu? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Dia State of well-being But it translates as She is state of well-being in English. For example, She's fine. Dia baik. Dia baik. Here are a few expressions related to well-being that you can use with this pattern. Great. Sangat baik. Sangat baik. Fine. Baik. Baik. So-so. Biasa-biasa. Biasa-biasa. Not too good. Tidak terlalu baik. Tidak terlalu baik. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia sangat baik. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia biasa-biasa saja. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia tidak terlalu baik. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, how's your mother? Bagaimana ibumu? Imagine she's great. Do you remember how to say great? Sangat baik. Sangat baik. Say, she's great. Dia sangat baik. Now, answer the question saying she's great. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia sangat baik. Now imagine she's so-so. Do you remember how to say so-so? Biasa-biasa. 
Biasa biasa. Say she's so so. Dia biasa biasa saja. Now answer the question saying she's so so. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia biasa biasa saja. Now imagine she's not too good. Do you remember how to say not too good? Tidak terlalu baik. Tidak terlalu baik. Say she's not too good. Dia tidak terlalu baik. Now answer the question saying she's not too good. Bagaimana ibumu? Dia tidak terlalu baik. You've studied for a while and are ready to talk to people and practice what you've learned. But where do you start? Starting a conversation in a new language can seem a bit intimidating. How do you just jump into it? In this video, we'll look at five ways to start conversations. Number one, introduce yourself in your target language. This is usually one of the first things you learn when you start studying a new language. And sometimes starting a conversation or continuing one is as simple as introducing yourself. Number two, talking about the weather. This is a universal talking point. People talk about the weather all over the world. And just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation. A great way to practice your weather conversation skills is to check out our can-do lesson pathway. This series of lessons teaches you how to talk about the weather in your target language. Number three, give compliments. Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. You can compliment something about your conversation partner's city, country, or something specific to them personally. Hey, your bag is super cute, or that ice cream looks delicious. These kinds of compliments can lead to further conversation about what you complimented. In this case, it could be fashion or a local restaurant. This is a great way to make quick connections with people. Number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions, ask about prices, or request recommendations for restaurants or shopping spots, and let the conversation go from there. People are usually happy to lend a helping hand to tourists who are visiting their city. Number five, learn phrases for transactions. This can include getting a room at a hotel or telling a taxi driver where to go. When you're traveling overseas, you'll need to talk to other people in your target language. And while this might be a bit scary at first, you'll find that the people you meet are just happy that you're trying to communicate with them. So get started talking in your target language now. For even more tips on how to start conversations, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey everyone, Alicia here. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's the matter? After watching this video, you'll be able to make complaints and ask someone else if they're having any issues. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making Complaints PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya panas. Once more with the English translation. Apa masalahnya? What's the matter? Kantornya panas. The office is hot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's the matter? That's... Apa masalahnya? Listen to it again. 
Apa masalahnya? Apa masalahnya? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Kantornya Adjective The office is adjective. For example, the office is hot. Kantornya panas. Kantornya panas. Here are a few more examples you can use with the same pattern to make complaints. Hot. Panas. Panas. Cold. Dingin. Dingin. Noisy. Berisik. Berisik. Dirty. Kotor. Kotor. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya dingin. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya berisik. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya kotor. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's the matter? Apa masalahnya? Imagine the office is cold. Do you remember how to say cold? Dingin. Dingin. Say, the office is cold. Kantornya dingin. Now answer the question saying the office is cold. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya dingin. Now imagine the office is noisy. Do you remember how to say noisy? Berisik. Berisik. Say, the office is noisy. Kantornya berisik. Now, answer the question saying the office is noisy. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya berisik. Now imagine the office is dirty. Do you remember how to say dirty? Kotor. Kotor. Say, the office is dirty. Kantornya kotor. Now answer the question, saying the office is dirty. Apa masalahnya? Kantornya kotor. You've studied for a while and are ready to talk to people and practice what you've learned. But where do you start? Starting a conversation in a new language can seem a bit intimidating. How do you just jump into it? In this video, we'll look at five ways to start conversations. Number one, introduce yourself in your target language. This is usually one of the first things you learn when you start studying a new language. And sometimes, starting a conversation, or continuing one, is as simple as introducing yourself. Number two, talking about the weather. This is a universal talking point. People talk about the weather all over the world. And just saying, it's really nice today, is enough to start a conversation. A great way to practice your weather conversation skills is to check out our can-do lesson pathway. This series of lessons teaches you how to talk about the weather in your target language. Number three, give compliments. 
Compliments are a great way to start a conversation. You can compliment something about your conversation partner's city, country, or something specific to them personally. Hey, your bag is super cute, or that ice cream looks delicious. These kinds of compliments can lead to further conversation about what you complimented. In this case, it could be fashion or a local restaurant. This is a great way to make quick connections with people. Number four, ask for help. For example, you can ask for directions, ask about prices, or request recommendations for restaurants or shopping spots and let the conversation go from there. People are usually happy to lend a helping hand to tourists who are visiting their city. Number five, learn phrases for transactions. This can include getting a room at a hotel or telling a taxi driver where to go. When you're traveling overseas, you'll need to talk to other people in your target language. And while this might be a bit scary at first, you'll find that the people you meet are just happy that you're trying to communicate with them. So get started talking in your target language now. For even more tips on how to start conversations, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to ask and answer the question, how do you say this? After watching this video, you'll be able to ask someone how a word is pronounced. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your How to Say Something PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini lapangan parkir. Once more with the English translation. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? How do you say this? Ini lapangan parkir. It's parking lot. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, How do you say this? That's... Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Listen to it again. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Ini... Word. It's word. For example, it's parking lot. Ini... Lapangan... Parkir. Ini lapangan parkir. Here are a few useful words you can use with the same pattern. Parking lot. Lapangan parkir. Lapangan parkir. Dog. Anjing. Anjing. Travel. Perjalanan. Perjalanan. Invasion. Serbuan. Serbuan. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini anjing. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini perjalanan. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini serbuan. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, how do you say this?
Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Now, imagine it's the word dog. Do you remember how to say dog? Anjing. Anjing. Say, it's dog. Ini anjing. Now answer the question saying it's dog. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini anjing. Now imagine the word is travel. Do you remember how to say travel? Perjalanan. Perjalanan. Say, it's travel. Ini perjalanan. Now, answer the question saying it's travel. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini perjalanan. Now imagine the word is invasion. Do you remember how to say invasion? Serbuan. Serbuan. Say, it's invasion. Ini serbuan. Now answer the question saying, it's invasion. Bagaimana Anda mengatakan ini? Ini serbuan. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what's your favorite number? After watching this video, you'll be able to say many numbers and ask someone their favorite number. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Numbers PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Tujuh. Once more with the English translation. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? What's your favorite number? Tujuh. It's seven. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What's your favorite number? That's... Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Listen to it again. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Berapa nomor favorit kamu? This Indonesian sentence literally translates into How much is your favorite number? But it means What's your favorite number in English? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is number. In Indonesian, we only say the number as the answer. For example, it's seven. Tujuh. Tujuh. Here are a few more numbers you can use with the same pattern. Seven. Tujuh. Tujuh. Two. Dua. Dua. Four. Empat. Empat. Nine. Sembilan. Sembilan. Let's look at some examples. 
Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Dua. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Empat. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Sembilan. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what's your favorite number? Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Imagine it's two. Do you remember how to say, two? Dua. Dua. Say, it's two. Dua. Now answer the question saying, it's two. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Dua. Now imagine it's four. Do you remember how to say four? Empat. Empat. Say, it's four. Empat. Now, answer the question by saying, it's four. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Empat. Now, imagine it's nine. Do you remember how to say nine? Sembilan. Sembilan. Say, it's nine. Sembilan. Now, answer the question saying, it's nine. Berapa nomor favorit kamu? Sembilan. Want to speak real Indonesian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at IndonesianPod101.com. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence-building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly, without even thinking about it. If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning, too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. 
Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what kind of movies do you like? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about movies and ask other people about their favorite kinds of movies. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real life situations, click the link in the description to download your Talking About Movies and TV PDF cheat sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film horror. Once more with the English translation. Kamu suka film genre apa? What kind of movies do you like? Aku suka film horror. I like horror movies. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What kind of movies do you like? That's... Kamu suka film genre apa? Listen to it again. Kamu suka film genre apa? Kamu suka film genre apa? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is... Aku suka film... Type of movie. This Indonesian sentence literally translates as I like movie type of movies. But it means I like type of movie movies. For example, I like horror movies. Aku suka film horror. Aku suka film horror. Here are a few more kinds of movies you can use with the same pattern to talk about movies. Horror. 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 Comedy. 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 Fantasy. Fantasy. 
Fantasy. Romance. Romantis. Romantis. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film komedi. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film fantasi. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film romantis. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what kind of movies do you like? Kamu suka film genre apa? Imagine you like comedies. Do you remember how to say comedy? Comedy. Comedy. Say, I like comedies. Aku suka film komedi. Now, answer the question saying that you like comedies. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film komedi. Now imagine that you like fantasy movies. Do you remember how to say fantasy? Fantasy. Fantasy. Say, I like fantasy movies. Aku suka film fantasy. Now, answer the question saying you like fantasy movies. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film fantasy. Now imagine you like romantic movies. Do you remember how to say romantic? Romantis. Romantis. Say, I like romantic movies. Aku suka film romantis. Now answer the question saying you like romantic movies. Kamu suka film genre apa? Aku suka film romantis. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? If so, of course, you'll need to know more words and phrases than you do now. In this video, we'll cover five ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary list. This is a free library of vocabulary and phrase lessons for all kinds of situations. You can learn words and phrases for current events, holidays like Halloween and Thanksgiving, and useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. You'll learn phrases that you won't find in textbooks. If you want to learn extra fast, use the slideshow tool. Just tap or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary list in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. These vocabulary lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is by hearing and using them in conversations. This is because it gives you the opportunity to understand how the words are actually used. In every lesson dialogue, you'll likely come across some words you don't know, but don't worry because our teachers translate everything. When you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll be familiar with the words you didn't know at first. Number three, learn with our 2000 most common words list. A quick question, how many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3000, 
5,000? It's actually not as many as you think. Language experts say you need about 1,500 words to reach conversational fluency. With our 2,000 most common words list, you'll get access to key vocabulary words you need to boost your conversation skills. The words are broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, months, and so on. So you can go category by category and focus on what you're most interested in first. With this tip, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. This is an automatic system individualized for each member based on their study needs. First, you'll use the cards to check your knowledge. Then, according to your answers, the cards will be sorted according to which words you need more practice with. Words that you struggle with will be shown to you more and more. You'll see words that you know well less often. This system helps you study more efficiently. It displays the words you need to work on and knows when you should refresh your knowledge. This helps make sure you don't forget vocabulary. In every study session, these cards will help you refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new words. Number five, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, here's something you can do. Leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow the word with a lessons dialogue. Our language learning program is full of tools that can help you speak more. Just pick one and get started. If you want to unlock all of these study tools, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, everyone. I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, what are you doing during the holiday? After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about your holiday plans. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real-life situations, click the link in the description to download your National Holidays PDF Cheat Sheet for free. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana pergi ke pantai. Once more with the English translation. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? What are you doing for Lunar New Year? Aku berencana pergi ke pantai. I'm planning to go to the beach. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, What are you doing for Lunar New Year? That's... Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Lunar New Year marks the new year according to the traditional Chinese calendar and is typically celebrated by the Indonesian Chinese. Listen to it again. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? This Indonesian sentence literally translates as You want to do what when Chinese New Year? But it means, what are you doing for Chinese New Year? Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is Aku berencana Plan I'm planning to Plan For example I'm planning to go to the beach. Aku berencana pergi ke pantai. Aku berencana pergi ke pantai.
Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk about your plans. Go to the beach. Pergi ke pantai. Pergi ke pantai. Travel. Bepergian. Bepergian. Stay home. Tinggal di rumah. Tinggal di rumah. Go to the movies. Pergi ke bioskop. Pergi ke bioskop. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana bepergian. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana tinggal di rumah. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana pergi ke bioskop. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, what are you doing for Lunar New Year? Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Imagine you're planning to travel. Do you remember how to say travel? Bepergian. Bepergian. Say, I'm planning to travel. Aku berencana bepergian. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to travel. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana bepergian. Now, imagine you're planning to stay home. Do you remember how to say, stay home? Tinggal di rumah. Tinggal di rumah. Say, I'm planning to stay home. Aku berencana tinggal di rumah. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to stay home. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana tinggal di rumah. Now imagine you're planning to go to the movies. Do you remember how to say, go to the movies? Pergi ke bioskop. Pergi ke bioskop. Say, I'm planning to go to the movies. Aku berencana pergi ke bioskop. Now, answer the question saying you're planning to go to the movies. Kamu mau melakukan apa waktu tahun baru Imlek? Aku berencana pergi ke bioskop. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one. And the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to use when talking on the phone. After watching this video, you'll be able to ask for someone on the phone and to put someone on hold. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real-life situations, click the link in the description to download your Making a Phone Call PDF cheat sheet for free.
Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. Halo, saya ingin berbicara dengan penanggung jawab. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Once more with the English translation. Halo, saya ingin berbicara dengan penanggung jawab. Hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Okay, just a moment. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say hello on the phone. That's... Hello? Hello? Then, you'll need to learn how to say, I'd like to speak with person. The pattern is... Saya ingin berbicara dengan... Person. This Indonesian sentence literally translates as, Can I speak with person? But it means, I'd like to speak with person. For example, hello, I'd like to speak with the person in charge. Halo, saya ingin berbicara dengan penanggung jawab. Halo, saya ingin berbicara dengan penanggung jawab. Now, how do you answer this question? Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Okay, just a moment. Listen to it again. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. This Indonesian sentence literally translates as, Okay, please wait for a moment. But it means, okay, just a moment. Here are a few more phrases you can use with the same pattern to talk on the phone. The person in charge. Penanggung jawab. Penanggung jawab. A sales representative. Tenaga penjualan. Tenaga penjualan. The manager. 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 Customer service. Pelayanan pelanggan. Pelayanan pelanggan. Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. Saya ingin berbicara dengan tenaga penjualan. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Saya ingin berbicara dengan manajer. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Saya ingin berbicara dengan pelayanan pelanggan. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, I'd like to speak with person? Saya ingin berbicara dengan person. And how do you answer it? Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Imagine you want to talk to a sales representative. Do you remember how to say a sales representative? Tenaga penjualan. Tenaga penjualan. Say, I'd like to speak with a sales representative. Saya ingin berbicara dengan tenaga penjualan. Now say you want to talk to a sales representative and answer it. Saya ingin berbicara dengan tenaga penjualan. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. 
Now, imagine you want to talk to the manager. Do you remember how to say, the manager? Manager. Manager. Say, I'd like to speak with the manager. Saya ingin berbicara dengan manager. Now say you want to talk to the manager and answer it. Saya ingin berbicara dengan manager. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. Now imagine you want to talk to customer service. Do you remember how to say customer service? Pelayanan pelanggan. Pelayanan pelanggan. Say, I'd like to speak with customer service. Saya ingin berbicara dengan pelayanan pelanggan. Now say you want to talk to customer service and answer it. Saya ingin berbicara dengan pelayanan pelanggan. Baik, silakan tunggu sebentar. When learning a new language, everyone should have an ultimate goal to work towards. Whether you want to be able to connect with a relative, easily order food while traveling, or go somewhere new, having an end goal for your learning can be very motivating. A popular but challenging goal is being able to speak like a native speaker. It's difficult to measure exactly when you reach this goal, and it's not something you can pick up using textbooks alone. So how do you work on making your speech more natural? That's what we're going to look at today. Here are three tips to help you practice talking like a native speaker. Number one, focus on vocabulary. If your goal is to speak like a native, you might be really focused on speaking quickly or using as many complex grammar patterns as possible. But in our native languages, we're not always trying to speak as fast as possible. And we use complex grammar patterns when necessary, not to show off. Vocabulary, however, is extremely important to expressing ourselves naturally. Your choice of words can reveal a lot about you and your understanding of the language. Most learners have had the experience of using a phrasebook or a dictionary to find a word they want to use, trying the word in conversation, and getting a look of confusion from the native speaker. In some cases, although your word choice may be grammatically correct, the word may be inappropriate for the situation or totally unnatural. This is especially important in business and other formal situations, where the right level of formality and professionalism is key. Being able to understand nuances and vocabulary words can also help you understand relationships between people just by listening to the conversation. Try to listen to many different types of conversations. Listen to how people talk to their friends, their superiors, and in customer service situations. This will give you a better idea of how to talk to others naturally. In some languages, you can omit words from sentences or use more direct communication styles. It's important to be aware of these things so you can apply them yourself. Colloquialisms and slang are also commonly used in most languages. As this sort of vocabulary is always evolving, it can be difficult to keep up with the latest words. Talk with native speakers and consume media in your target language to make sure you pick up these kinds of expressions. Media is a great resource for your learning. Ultimately, knowing the appropriate vocabulary to use for each situation will really help you sound more knowledgeable. Number two, perfect your accent. With every language, there are unique pronunciation and intonation challenges. Some languages are tonal languages, and a change in pitch can completely change the meaning of a word. Then there's the fact that most countries have multiple dialects, and so people from one area of the country may sound different from those in another. So what is the best way to listen to a wide range of accents and different pronunciations? Video and audio resources are a great way to do this. YouTube is a perfect place to start because people from all kinds of different backgrounds upload videos to the platform. You can watch educational videos, daily life vlogs, cooking shows, a travel series, whatever interests you. Pay attention to the different ways people speak. Everyone is unique. And then practice speaking like them. This kind of practice can help you sound more natural. One note, please be aware of the type of resources you're using. 
For example, if you find a video where a speaker uses a rare dialect, it might not be a good idea to use that for your pronunciation practice, unless you have a special reason for studying a specific accent. As a general rule, it's best to try to search for practice resources that use a standard form of the language you're studying. Number three, copy what you hear. Do you remember how you learned to speak as a child? We rarely learned new words just listening to them or reading after we learned how. When we were little kids, we imitated the sounds we heard by repeating the sounds out loud. While you're talking to a friend, watching videos, or listening to audio in your target language, you can do this to try and replicate the way they speak. Doing this will help you work on mastering the flow of the language, your accent, intonation, and pronunciation. Of course, you might also pick up some new vocabulary this way. Make sure to repeat new words often. It's a great way to make sure you remember them. Try doing this using a number of different mediums and sources. That way, you'll be exposed to the diversity that the language offers and master the fundamentals of pronunciation. For example, you can watch and imitate several different YouTube videos and audio CDs, but try a few different sources, like different creators or different audio types, to make sure you experience a wide range of communication in your target language. If you're using our language learning program, you can even get your own teacher with Premium Plus. Your teacher can answer questions, give assignments, and even listen to your recordings and give you advice on pronunciation. Completing these kinds of lessons with a native teacher can really boost your confidence in your speaking skills. Becoming able to speak like a native is a popular goal for many people learning a new language. It feels great to be able to communicate smoothly, especially when the people you're talking to expect basic level sentences or broken communication. Try using the tips we've shared in this video to work on improving your speaking skills. Of course, it'll take time and persistence, but the reward will be more natural communication. And for even more tips on speaking, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next Want to speak real Indonesian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at indonesianpod101.com. Bu, apa ini? Ini pohon beringin. Oh, apa itu? Itu keris. Oh, apa ini? Ini keluar. Oh, begitu. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use permisi and other words when apologizing in Indonesian. We should use permisi in formal situations such as when we are ordering something in bars or restaurants. For example, Permisi, saya mau pesan kopi ya. Excuse me, a coffee please. We can also use it when asking a question. Permisi, di mana letak monas? Excuse me, where is the national monument? Sometimes we will often hear people say ya yeah, on the end of command sentences, which is an informal way to say please. This word is used to soften the comments or request. And sometimes, ya yeah is used to ask whether something is true or not. Ya yeah is very often replaced by dong, which have similar meaning and purpose. But be careful in using these words because they are informal and only spoken to close friends and family. The other way to say excuse me is maaf. Maaf. Just like permisi, we can use maaf when asking a question except that we only use maaf when apologizing. Maaf can be used for either excuse me or I'm sorry. But if you really want to apologize for something, it might be better to use saya minta maaf. It means I am sorry. And can be used in both formal and informal situations. Saya minta maaf. First, we have the familiar saya or I. Next, we insert the Indonesian word for asking for, minta. Finally, we have maaf, meaning sorry. Saya minta maaf. Now it's time for Fira's insights. Please remember that in Indonesia, if you accidentally bump into someone, we don't say, I am sorry. Saya minta maaf. Instead, we could just simply say maaf. In this lesson, we'll learn some of the most common greetings used in Indonesia. Sudah siap?
Are you ready? Mari kita mulai. So let's start. The most used informal greeting is hello. Hello. Hello means hi or hello. We use it when we meet. It is very casual, so we should only use this greeting with friends or family. If you need to greet someone in a formal situation, say Selamat siang. Selamat siang. Literally, Selamat siang means good day. We can use Selamat siang only during the daytime, from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. During the afternoon, we say Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Sore is Indonesian for afternoon, so Selamat sore means good afternoon. This is used from about 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. During the night, we say Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Malam is Indonesian for night. This is used from 6 p.m. to midnight. And finally, during the morning, we say Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Pagi is Indonesian for morning. This is used in the morning until 11 a.m. These four greetings are used when we meet someone. But when we leave, we don't say them again. When we part in Indonesia, we say Selamat tinggal. Selamat tinggal. Selamat tinggal means goodbye. And it is a formal expression. Finally, in Indonesian, we have an expression meaning see you that can be considered both formal and informal. Sampai jumpa. Sampai jumpa. Now, you can greet people in many different ways in Indonesian. Let's review them all again. When meeting in informal situations, we say hello. When meeting older people or someone we don't know, we say Selamat pagi in the morning, Selamat siang in the early afternoon, Selamat sore in the evening, or Selamat malam at night. When living in a formal situation, we say Selamat tinggal. When living, no matter whether it's a formal or informal situation, Sampai jumpa. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Fira's insights. In formal situations, Indonesian people commonly greet each other by shaking hands and bowing their heads slightly. On the other hand, if we meet someone we are very friendly with, we can just wave. We're going to learn how to go shopping in Indonesia. Before we go, you need to know how to say, how much is it? Ini berapa harganya? Ini berapa harganya? Are you ready to go shopping in Indonesia? Let's go! You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say is, permisi. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Permisi, ini berapa harganya? Permisi, ini berapa harganya? If you want to be more specific when asking how much is this and refer to a certain type of object, we need to put the noun in front of the question. For example, hat is topi. Permisi, topi ini berapa harganya? Excuse me, how much is this hat? Permisi, topi ini berapa harganya? And sandal is sendal. Permisi, sendal ini berapa harganya? Excuse me, how much are these sandals? Permisi, sendal ini berapa harganya? At this point, the shopkeeper can answer by saying, Ini harganya, or yang ini, and then the price. For example, ini harganya 30 ribu rupiah, or Yang ini, 30 ribu rupiah. What number is 30 ribu? I'm not telling you. Okay, it's 30,000. It costs 30,000 rupiahs. Now, it's time for Fierce Insights. A quick way to ask how much is berapa. For example, when you want a coffee or a kopi at a coffee shop, you can ask the cashier, pesan kopi dong berapa? One coffee, please. How much is it? Do you know how to say thank you in Indonesian? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say it. 
Let's start with the easiest one. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Another way to say thank you is Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih banyak. Finally, here's a third way to express your gratitude. Makasih banget. Makasih banget. Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih banyak. Makasih banget. Makasih banget. Well done. You just learned three different ways to say thank you in Indonesian. Hello everyone. I'm Blanca and you're watching Top Words. Today, we are going to learn top 25 Indonesian phrases. Are you ready? Hello. 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 Okay, first one. Hello. Hello. We are saying this if we meet someone for the first time. Hello. Hello. Or you can say this on a telephone. Hello. Can I speak to... Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Selamat pagi. This is morning. Very, very good morning. Okay, the third one. Selamat sore. Selamat sore. Good afternoon. Selamat sore. Good afternoon. Selamat sore. Good afternoon. Selamat malam. Selamat malam. Good night. Selamat malam. Can you guess what it is? Yes, good night. Yeah, after afternoon, good night. Selamat malam. Siapa nama kamu? Siapa nama kamu? What's your name? Siapa nama kamu? What's your name? Siapa nama kamu? What's your name? Saya Blanca. Saya Blanca. I'm Blanca. To answer the previous question, I would say Saya Blanca. My name is Blanca or I'm Blanca. Saya Blanca. Siapa nama kamu? What's your name? Saya Mika. I'm Mika. Senang bertemu denganmu. Senang bertemu denganmu. Nice to meet you. Senang bertemu denganmu. Nice to meet you. Senang bertemu denganmu. Or you can say, senang bertemu dengan kamu. Senang bertemu denganmu. Senang bertemu denganmu. Did you get it? Apa kabar? Apa kabar? How are you? This is like universal. Apa kabar? How are you? Apa kabar? Saya baik, terima kasih. Dan kamu? 
Saya baik. Terima kasih. Dan kamu? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Saya baik. Terima kasih. Dan kamu? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Saya baik. Terima kasih. Dan kamu? Mohon. Mohon. Please. Mohon. Please. Mohon. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Did you get it? Terima kasih. Thank you. Sama-sama. Sama-sama. You're welcome. Okay, this next one is the answer to the previous phrase. Sama-sama. You're welcome. Sama-sama. You're welcome. So, if people say, Terima kasih, you can say, Sama-sama. Iya. Iya. Yes. Iya. Means yes. Iya. So, you can answer this if you're agreeing with something or you want to say yes. Or just, yeah. Iya. Or, yeah. Yes. Tidak. Tidak. No. If you want to say you disagree or you don't like something, you don't want something, you can say tidak. No. Tidak. No. This is the very formal way to say no, but usually we say enggak. But that's like a casual, very casual and informal way of saying no. Tidak. Enggak. Baik. Baik. Okay. Baik. Okay. Baik. Okay. This word means good. But it can be used if you say okay. It's also okay to use okay in Indonesia because they also understand okay. But in a formal way, you say baik. Permisi. Permisi. Excuse me. Permisi. Excuse me. Permisi. So you can use this if you are visiting someone's house and you're knocking at the door and knock, knock. Permisi. There's no one answering. Just keep saying, Permisi. Permisi. Until they came out. Saya minta maaf. Saya minta maaf. I'm sorry. 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 What did I do wrong? I don't know, but just say you're sorry. It works every every phrase, every 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 situation. Saya minta maaf. Jam berapa sekarang? Jam berapa sekarang? What time is it? Jam berapa sekarang? Can you guess what it means? Yeah, what time is it? Jam berapa sekarang? What time is it? I don't know. I don't have any watch. Di mana letak kamar kecil? Di mana letak 
kamar kecil. Where is the restroom? Di mana letak kamar kecil? I have to go. Di mana letak kamar kecil? Where is the restroom? Mohon tunggu sebentar. Mohon tunggu sebentar. Wait a moment. Mohon tunggu sebentar. Wait a moment. Mohon tunggu sebentar. Wait a moment. Tutut. Hmm. The line you're calling is busy. Mohon tunggu sebentar. Wait a moment, wait a moment. Mohon tunggu sebentar. It's always busy. Berapa harganya? Berapa harganya? How much is this? Berapa harganya? How much is this? You can use this if you are shopping in a small shop. Mbak, berapa harganya? And you can even bargain for it if they let you. Just try. Mbak, berapa? Miss, how much? Tolong. Tolong. Help. Tolong. Help. Tolong. Help. Help, please. Mohon tolong saya. Sampai jumpa lagi. Sampai jumpa lagi. See you later. Sampai jumpa lagi. See you later. Sampai jumpa lagi. You can use this in the end of your meeting. Sampai jumpa lagi. Selamat tinggal. Goodbye. Selamat tinggal. This usually ends not very well because it means like you not going to see each other again. <laughs> Selamat tinggal. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't like this. <laughs> Saya tidak tahu. Saya tidak tahu. I don't know. Saya tidak tahu. I don't know. Saya tidak tahu. I don't know. So, yeah, if you were asked by someone about something and you definitely don't know, you should say this. Saya tidak tahu. I don't know. What's your hobby? Saya tidak tahu. I don't know. What do you know? Nah. Okay, guys, so that's the end of today's lesson. Let me know which is your favorite phrase of the day. Or if you have any question, don't hesitate to write in the comment below. If you like this video, please like this video and subscribe. And don't forget to check our website, indonesianpod101.com, to check other Indonesian lessons. Okay then, sampai jumpa lagi. Goodbye. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Indonesian Top Words with me, Blanca. So today's lesson will be about 10 must-know autumn vocabulary. Okay then, let's start. Baju hangat. Baju hangat. Sweater. Saya membeli baju hangat ini saat saya berpergian ke New York. I bought this sweater by the time I traveled to New York. Saya membeli baju hangat ini saat saya berpergian ke New York. So, yeah, the word was Baju hangat. Sweater. We also say sweater, but we say like sweater. 
So yeah, if you say in Indonesia, do you have a sweater? Kamu punya sweater? It's yeah, they understand. Baju hangat. Hujan. Rainy. Hari ini akan turun hujan sepanjang hari. Hari ini akan turun hujan sepanjang hari. Today the rain will fall all day. So today the rain will fall all day. So what will I do today? Aha, sleep. Because that's what Indonesian do when it's raining outside. We sleep inside. <laughs> We have this word called mager means males gerak means we are lazy to do anything at all. So this is what we do when it's raining. Mager. Males gerak. <sighs> Just sleep. I'm I'm too lazy to do anything. <sighs> Berangin. Windy. Di luar agak berangin. Jadi sebaiknya kamu pakai jaket. Di luar agak berangin. Jadi sebaiknya kamu pakai jaket. It's a little bit windy outside. So you better wear your jacket. Oh, it's windy. The wind. The wind is so so What is the wind? <laughs> so strong. So... Oh, the wind is so strong. Where's my jacket? Oh, I don't have any. I'll go home. Jacket. Sejuk. Cool. Sekitar bulan Oktober, udaranya sangat sejuk. Sekitar bulan Oktober, udaranya sangat sejuk. Around October, the air is very cool. Well, there are some cool places like up in the mountain, <laughs> but not, not so cool because we don't have autumn. Musim gugur. Autumn. Daun-daun berganti warna saat Musim gugur. Daun-daun berganti warna saat musim gugur. The leaves change its colors during the autumn season. Yes, actually this, this is what uh, the tropical countries people don't have. You know, like uh, the leaf changes color. Indonesian people try to go abroad, like to Canada, America, Japan, every, anywhere that have autumn. And yeah, we want to see the leaves change its colors because it's so beautiful. Pilek. Cold. Saat pilek, saya sering minum air jahe yang hangat dengan madu dan lemon. Saat pilek, saya sering minum air jahe yang hangat dengan madu dan lemon. When I catch a cold, I often drink a warm ginger water with honey and lemon. Yes, actually in Indonesia, We add milk and raw egg with this, but not honey. We use like um, a brown sugar, which is very, very special that uh, we cannot find it in outside Indonesia. Probably we can in Thailand or Philippines, but it's different. So yeah, this is very good if you are catching a cold. Or pilek. I hate pilek. I hate cold, like runny nose, Ooh, cold, and fever. 
my head hurts. I want to go to the doctor and I want to sleep. <sighs> Kacang kastanya. Chestnut. Saya belum pernah makan kacang kastanya. Seperti apa rasanya? Saya belum pernah makan kacang kastanya. Seperti apa rasanya? I've never eaten a chestnut. What does it taste like? Kevin. <laughs> If it's good, you can say it enak. Good, delicious, enak. Or not good, tidak enak. Not good. Okay, I'll be waiting. Daun. Leaf. Daun ini adalah bagian dari hiasan. Bukan untuk dimakan. Daun ini... Adalah bagian dari hiasan. Bukan untuk dimakan. This leaf is part of a decoration. It's not intended for eating. If there's a, like, a leaf in my plate, I'll just eat it. As long as it's not plastic, you know, I'll just try to eat it. And if it's not good, I would just... But I tried. <laughs> yeah, I tried. I like to try new things. So that's that. Dedaunan yang gugur. Falling leaves. Anak-anak itu sedang bermain di hamparan dedaunan yang gugur. Anak-anak itu sedang bermain di hamparan dedaunan yang gugur. The kids are playing at the overlay of falling leaves. Hari pengucapan syukur. Thanksgiving. Saya akan menonton parade Hari Pengucapan Syukur pada siang hari. Saya akan menonton parade Hari Pengucapan Syukur pada siang hari. I will watch the Thanksgiving parade in the daytime. I cannot think of a day that we give thanks, like nationally, we give thanks every day. <laughs> that was awesome. People in Indonesia, it's, it's so religious and we give thanks every day. So we have no like national holiday where we sit and eat a big fast just to give thanks. Okay, so yeah, we give thanks every day. Remember that, you should too. Okay, so that's the end. Don't forget to write a comment. And also, if you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button or subscribe. And do not forget to go to our website, indonesianpod 101.com and check other lessons there. Okay? So, see you! Sampai jumpa! Erase, erase, erase. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Blanca. Welcome to Indonesian Top Words. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about 10 ways to save the planet in Indonesian. Are you ready? Daur ulang. Daur ulang. To recycle. Okay, the first phrase. Daur ulang. To recycle. Botol dan kaleng dari minuman bisa didaur ulang. Botol dan kaleng dari minuman bisa didaur ulang. 
bottles and cans from drinks can be recycled. Funny thing is, in Jakarta, we don't do recycle as good as other countries in the world. It's sad, but some people make money from this. So you can、um, gather your own like caps, bottle caps, plastic bottles, or your cans, and you can sell it, and you can make small amount of money. But the one who buy it, they will also like sell it to the bigger, bigger. Agent and they're also making money from it. So, yeah, it's not it's not like everyone is doing it because they want to, but sometimes just to get some extra money. Matikan lampu. Matikan lampu to switch off the light. Mohon matikan lampu dalam ruangan yang tidak dipakai. Mohon. Matikan lampu dalam ruangan yang tidak dipakai. Please turn off the lights on the rooms that are not in use. Melindungi, melindungi, to protect. Melindungi, to protect. Pakailah tabir surya. Untuk melindungi kulitmu, pakailah tabir surya untuk melindungi kulitmu. Please use sunscreen to protect your skin. Pemakaian ulang, pemakaian ulang to reuse. Okay, next one. Pemakaian ulang to reuse. Pemakaian ulang minyak goreng yang terlalu sering tidak baik untuk kesehatan. Pemakaian ulang minyak goreng yang terlalu sering tidak baik untuk kesehatan. Reusing cooking oil too often is not good for one's health. One of the sample is like in Indonesia. There's a lot of street vendor. Who sell fried food with this kind of reused cooking oil? Melestarikan, melestarikan, to conserve. Next word, melestarikan, to conserve. Mari melestarikan lingkungan dengan penghijauan. Mari melestarikan lingkungan. Dengan penghijauan, let's conserve the environment through reforestation. Mengurangi sampah. Mengurangi sampah to reduce trash. Next one. Mengurangi sampah to reduce waste. Kita bisa mengurangi sampah dengan pemakaian ulang. Kita bisa mengurangi sampah dengan pemakaian ulang. We can reduce waste by reusing it. Peduli dengan lingkungan. Peduli dengan lingkungan. To care for the environment. Okay, next one. Peduli dengan lingkungan. To care for the environment. Saya selalu memakai tas sendiri saat berbelanja karena saya peduli dengan lingkungan. Saya selalu memakai. Tas sendiri saat berbelanja karena saya peduli dengan lingkungan. I always use my own bag when shopping because I care about the environment. Yes, I do. I always do. It saves money too. Okay. Menggunakan produk ramah lingkungan. 
menggunakan produk ramah lingkungan to use eco-friendly products menggunakan produk ramah lingkungan to use eco-friendly products semua yang dijual di toko ini menggunakan produk ramah lingkungan semua yang dijual di toko ini menggunakan produk ramah lingkungan. Everything that is sold in this shop uses eco-friendly products. Really? Okay, I'll buy everything then. Buang sampah. Buang sampah. To throw garbage. Buanglah sampah pada tempat yang sudah disediakan. Buanglah sampah pada tempat yang sudah disediakan. Please throw away the garbage at the provided place. Yes, please do that because it could cause flood, it could cause Just stinky places, dirty places. No, I don't like it. Naik kendaraan umum. Naik kendaraan umum. To take public transportation. The next one. Naik kendaraan umum. To take public transportation. Naik kendaraan umum. Bisa mengurangi gas rumah kaca. Naik kendaraan umum bisa mengurangi gas rumah kaca. Taking public transportation can reduce greenhouse gases. So actually, in Indonesia, greenhouse is glass house. Rumah kaca. Rumah means house, kaca, glass or mirror. Like we don't say greenhouse in like in green, but we say glass house because the houses are made from glasses. Okay, guys. So this is the end of our lesson today. Okay, then. Sampai jumpa lagi. Goodbye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Indonesian Top Words with me, Blanca. So today's lesson is 10 gift ideas you must know in Indonesian. Okay. Laptop. 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 Saya butuh laptop agar saya Bisa bekerja di mana saja. Saya butuh laptop agar saya bisa bekerja di mana saja. I need a laptop so I can work anywhere. But who will give me a laptop for a gift. Yeah, because laptop is a very, very expensive gift. Don't you think so? Would you give a laptop to your friend? You will? Can I be your friend? Please? Minyak wangi. Minyak wangi. Perfume. Minyak wangi yang saya suka Tidak dijual di sini. Minyak wangi yang saya suka tidak dijual di sini. The perfume that I like is not sold in here. If someone give me a perfume, that means I'm smelly. Right? Like, 
for example, here's a perfume, please, please, please wear this. And I was like thinking, ah, I must be smelly. Okay, I will wear this. <laughs> Maybe it's nice if it's you know someone well, but if you don't know that person well and you give her or him a perfume, yeah, he might think that he is smelly and needs a perfume. So think about it. Buku. Buku. Book. Saya biasanya membeli buku lewat Amazon. Saya biasanya membeli buku lewat Amazon. I usually buy books through Amazon. Kamera. 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 Ongkos untuk memperbaiki kamera digital saya yang rusak sangat mahal. Ongkos untuk memperbaiki kamera digital saya yang rusak sangat mahal. The cost of repairing my broken digital camera is very expensive. Yeah, you're probably right. I should say that my camera is broken, so someone will buy it for me. Digital camera is very, very expensive. But now we take picture with this next word. Seluler pintar. Seluler Pintar Smartphone Saya ingin seluler pintar untuk hadiah ulang tahun saya. Saya ingin seluler pintar untuk hadiah ulang tahun saya. I want a smartphone for my birthday present. Funny thing is about smartphone that it makes people not smart. Like we forget things and yeah, but we can take pictures, we can, you know, save um, reminder, save our schedules. It's good, but there's some downside too. So don't forget if you have a smartphone, don't forget to make yourself smart too. Okay? Konsol permainan. Konsol permainan. Game console. Ayah saya tidak pernah mengizinkan saya bermain konsol permainan. Ayah saya Tidak pernah mengizinkan saya bermain konsol permainan. My dad never allows me to play a game console. He is probably right because, well, it is fun to play with game console, but Sometimes you forget about time because they consume all your time to study, even to eat, even to sleep. So probably he's right and you should listen to your dad. And if you want to play, you have to probably you have to schedule your own time and be sure you do that homework, you sleep well, you eat well. So probably your dad will change his mind, okay? Kamus. Kamus. Dictionary. Saya sedang mencari kamus bahasa Perancis Inggris. 
Saya sedang mencari kamus bahasa Perancis Inggris. I'm looking for a French English language dictionary. Sepatu. Sepatu. Shoes. Saya suka sekali dengan sepatu ini, tapi ukuran saya sudah habis terjual. Saya suka sekali dengan sepatu ini, tapi ukuran saya sudah habis terjual. I really like these shoes, but my size is sold out. I, I just read about this, but is it true that nowadays people are allowed to use hideous sneakers? No, I never heard of it. Yeah, I read. Probably it's like a sarcasm because like in the 90s, the 80s and 90s, like sneakers are really, really cool and well, their new trend but now it's like the trend is like uh, you know you can find any shoes that you want in the market and some of them are hideous but you are allowed to use it because you like it so people are allowed to use any shoes that they'll like nowadays i know yeah i, <laughs> I don't know i i read this some some probably not important meme Perhiasan Perhiasan Jewelry Apakah kamu lebih suka perhiasan perak atau emas? Apakah kamu lebih suka perhiasan perak atau emas? Which do you prefer? Silver jewelry or gold? For me, I like gold because it's beautiful and yeah, it's more expensive. But I think in some countries you can sell it even if you need money, then you can just sell it to yeah some shops that can take your gold and exchange for money. Who money? <laughs> Greedy. <laughs> Greedy. Don't talk about money. <laughs> Sepeda. Sepeda. Bicycle. Saya selalu naik sepeda menuju ke sekolah. Saya selalu naik sepeda Menuju ke sekolah. I always ride a bicycle to go to school. Okay, so that's the end of gifts you should know in Indonesian. So which gift would you like to give to your friend? Because some of them are expensive, I notice. But if you want to give a laptop or a digital camera or a smartphone to me, I will be gladly receive it and I'll be the nicest friend for you. No, oh, no, that's not nice. <laughs> that's materialistic. I know. It's not good. Okay. So anyway, probably you have other ideas for gift in Indonesian that you know of. You can write in the comment section. And also, if you like this video, please don't forget to click the like button or subscribe. And do not forget to go to our website, IndonesianPod101.com and check other lessons there. Okay? See you! Sampai jumpa! You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? 
Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.